This is Future Africa on OBN Horn of Africa. I'm Anwar Khalil, your host. And I'll be joined by a guest from Tanzania, Chief Executive Officer and Founder of One Africa, an activist, a musical artist, and a Pan-Africanist. Also a writer who wrote books in Swahili. And he is Mika Lucas Chavala. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Let me ask you a question um, that goes to your tutor. Uh, the um, picture at the back of your, your page, the Twitter page, oh, yeah. is a very yeah. old and historical uh, uh, picture, uh, including, mm. you know, I guess I should say, you know, founders of the African Union. Yes. Because OAU became African Union. Why that picture? Yes. Why? You know, you cannot have um, a good future if you don't know your history. You cannot have a future at all if you don't look back to the past. And I have that picture because it reminds me of these heroes in Africa who fought for our independence and make sure that we are where we are today. And where we are right now, it's our responsibility, Africans, to do actually the same thing even more to save the future of our, uh, uh, of, our, of our children later in the past. And that's why I have that picture because every single time I go to the social media, it reminds me of, of something greater, that I'm fighting for something that is higher than myself. I'm fighting for my people, I'm fighting for Africa. That's why I have that picture there. Uh, you always, by the way, when we were also in South Korea, I was uh, watching, you know, uh, uh, you not as a YouTuber, not as an activist. I also consider yeah. you know, uh, Lucas Shavala as uh, an, a Pan-Africanist who always talks about uh, one Africa and about unity of Africa, about the strength of Africa. And even re you recently mm -hmm. tweeted that Africa is exporting wealth and importing poverty. What does that mean? Yeah. It means, you know, Africa is one of the richest continent in the in the world and congo let's take an example of congo is the richest country in the world and we but every single year africa uh west uh, approximately 50 to 100 billion us dollars every single year and that is more than the loans we receive from outside all right so when you look at this you will understand that the loans that we receive is lesser than the money that we lose and the wealth that we, we lose every single year. That's first thing. But the second thing, Africa is blessed with natural resources. And that's, that's, that's kind of wealth I'm talking about. Diamond, gold, oil, tanzanite, all these minerals and so many other resources that we have is the wealth of Africa. It's something that is supposed to, uh, to contribute to Africa's economy and to support Africans. But it's vice versa. What's happening is every single year we're losing this to some people outside who are coming and take it away, manufacture them and bring us back as the uh, manufactured products that we need to pay for. So you can see, you know, the, the game that is going on here that we are losing wealth every single day and we're importing poverty in our own continent that God has blessed us with everything that we do have. Mualimu Julius Nerere of Tanzania one of the mm -hmm. founders of the African uh, Organization of African Unity, uh, the, uh, the present uh, AU. And mm -hmm. you, a young guy from that land, says mm -hmm. everywhere in Africa is my home. What does that mean? This, this is amazing. You know, Africa, uh, we have these boundaries that they were created by colonies, um, right? These boundaries that are here, we didn't invent them. But there were people who actually had a meeting outside of Africa discussing and deciding which part of land to own, like what kind of people to own. So they came to Africa and they divided our continent into different small countries, like 53 countries. But when you look at the African continent, this is supposed to be one. We are actually one people because we are all Africans. But someone else for their own interests they decided to divide Africa. And, and, and that's why this is kind of knowledge that we need to teach our kids and this generation right now that, you know, let, let's not these boundaries divide us. Let's not this um, uh, tribalism, tribes divide us because we are actually one people and we are all African, that's all matters. So we should always think Africa first. And that's why I always say one Africa. And then whatever that is coming next is, is next. But when you don't think like that, 
Um, that's why you find that we have so many places in Africa that are having quarrels, are having conflicts, uh, because we, we, we don't think that Africa is actually one, but it is one. Oh, but but uh, in real mm. terms, in real terms, yes. what's your comment mm. on the African Union? I mean, the unity of Africa. Is it real? Mm. I mean, can it be reality? Uh, or in our generation, can we see a United States of Africa? Yes. Um, I, I, I have a huge hope for Africa. And my wish and my dream is to be one Africa before I'm gone. That's my hope. And, and I think it's something, it's achievable because you can take a, a look of what's going on right now in your country, Ethiopia, right? You can see how many people are coming together uh, to raise their voice against exploitation and things that are happening from outside to our own continent. Not only that, but you can see what's happening in Sudan. People are coming together, people that are standing against the, 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 the regime in Sudan because they want to bring people together. They realize that, hey, we are actually one and we have to be one. The same thing is happening in Burkina Faso and Niger. And the same thing is happening between one country and another country within the continent. Because you can take an example of me, I'm not Ethiopian, but I always stand for Ethiopia, I always stand for Sudan, I always stand for Africa. So this is something that is achievable, but it depends on how willing we want to sacrifice because it's not gonna be easy to get it, but it depends how much we are willing to face the consequences and we're willing to sacrifice our comfortableness to have unity because having unity is not gonna be comfortable at the same time. Uh, well, uh, talking about Ethiopia, that's what, what I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask you. Uh, you joined yes. no more, no hashtag no more. Uh, mm -hmm. And you also tweet, mm -hmm. absolutely, I can say differently, in a sense of that when mm -hmm. one is attacked, the other is attacked in Africa. When Eritrea is in, attacked, mm -hmm. all Africans are attacked. Mm -hmm. If Nigeria is attacked, yes. all Africans are attacked. Mm -hmm. And you raised the, the issue of Ethiopia and said uh, many countries are mm -hmm. joining the Ethiopian resistance. Uh, and some others even mm. say Ethiopia is fighting an African war. What's your comment on that? Exactly. Absolutely. Because what's going on in Ethiopia is not just going on in Ethiopia, but it's going on throughout the continent. The difference is Ethiopian people, they decided to stand up and to speak against it, to say no more to this. But there are other places, other countries that they're not saying anything because they're embracing it or maybe because they don't have freedom to, to say it. Um, and, and that's why I think, you know, Ethiopia has been a model, a role model for Africa for a long time, for very long time. You know, it has never been colonized and so many countries have been looking up to. Uh, and that's why even in this movement right now, you can see that they are, they are front there, standing for Ethiopia, right, right? Standing for their people, for their country, but at the same time standing for Africa. So now a lot of Africans like me and other people are involved to join in and realize that, oh, this is not just about Ethiopia, but we are saying no to uh, neocolonialism that is happening right now, actually across the continent of Africa. And, and that's why that is African war. And I, I hope everybody will join. Uh, recently, even you used your box guitar and sang, pray for Ethiopia. Uh, why praying for Ethiopia? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I'm a believer. You know, I, uh, I'm a Christian and I love Jesus. And, and uh, I believe that in this fight, it's, it's not just physical fight. I believe it's a spiritual fight. And a lot of time, like I'm trying to look at our, our ancestors, how they fought for Pan-Africanism and how they fought for unity. One thing that I think it was, it was, it was almost lacking is God being at the center of this fight. Right. And that's why me right now and I'm inviting all the current generation right now to actually include God in the fight, because we as Africans, we believe in God, regardless of our religions. We have different religions. We have different beliefs, but we believe in almighty God. And why don't we come together and to pray for our brothers and sisters in Ethiopia who are going through, uh, you know, this situation right now or Sudan or that can or Tanzania or Kenya. And I believe that when we put God at the center, then everything else is possible because um, some other fights, we cannot really do anything. Like human being, we have limits. We cannot change situation. We cannot force people to be united. But sometimes we need to remind them that, hey, God who created you, he created you to be one. Why are you fighting? Why are you not united? That's, that's, that's why I, I always pray for Ethiopia and for Africa as well. 
Um, no, Mika Lucas Chavala, um, which is something yeah. also, because uh, that's a very important thing to be talked about, the recent things. You wrote a letter mm. to President of France, Emmanuel Macron. Uh, I read yes. both in French and English about Niger mm -hmm. and other parts of, mm. specifically about Niger that you did, or which you say Niger. Uh, mm. Why yeah. that? And what was the response? Actually, until right now, I didn't get any response from him. But that really came out of uh, a huge uh, frustration of my people. Niger people, or like any African country, any African people are my people. And you know, when we lost those three brothers in Niger who were killed by French troops, um, it, it really, it really, like it really, uh, it, it really hit me so bad because those are people that we know, but there are people who are dying every single day and being killed in your own country by someone else who is invading your country from outside, it's not right. We have to stand against that. And for me, writing that letter to him, it's a cry of help that please president, dear president, Emmanuel Macron, please see the cry of our people. I wrote this letter, but this letter represents Africa. That's how we feel. And we, we, we hope, we wish, because he has ability to make a decision and to change the situation, but he's not doing that. Why you're not doing that? You depend on Africa, your economy depend on Africa. I said in that paper that 40% of electricity in France depends on uranium that is coming from Niger. And in Niger, you have 86% of people without electricity. So they are actually benefiting France more than they benefit themselves. And why you're still killing those people? Why you cannot stand for those people? Why you still have your French troops in Africa? Why? This is another way of neocolonialism. And that's why I always ask Africa Union, we have to do something about this. We can't allow this country to come to our continent and to kill our people. It's one thing to come to the continent, but killing our own people, we cannot stand, we, we cannot just stand silent and not saying anything. And that's why I had to take initiative to write that letter. And I hope, I hope he saw it. And I hope he's gonna do something about it because I had like three to four demands in that letter. I hope, I hope something will change uh, because I, I'm tired of seeing my people dying like that. That's my hope too. About that. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we say Africa is um, really independent and free then if uh, the French troops are on African ground and kill our people on our soil? Uh, can we say Africa is um, a free continent? Oh, in the 1960s, Africa got, you know, many countries got independence uh, in the 1960s. Um, so can we say that? We cannot say that. We cannot say that. That's why the other day I tweeted and I said that Africa is actually is still under colonization right now. And I took an example of what's going on in that area, like Western Africa, you know, Niger, you can see all those Burkina Faso, um, even Congo, right? All these Francophone countries, we even call them Francophone. I, I wish we changed that name, right? Because they're African countries, but it feels like the, the French culture has like swallowed everything. They speak their language, the music and their culture is just like friends. It's like you have friends in Africa and that's what's going on. So we cannot say that we are free by that, and it doesn't matter whether I am from that region or not, but we are not free because Africa, we have to see Africa as one. We are one Africa and we are not free. And it's our responsibility, our duty to kick these people out of our continent so that we may be completely free. You just saw like recently uh, the, the island of Barbados, they got their independent from, yeah. from Queen Elizabeth, yeah. finally. Exactly. So I, I was actually surprised. I didn't even know that, but I saw and I was like, oh, this is what we're going through in Africa. And we need our African countries to actually be fully independent. And I think it's our job. It's the job of all Africans to raise our voice, to become one and to say no more to this. And um, uh, let me bring you back to Ethiopia. Uh, yeah. Out of uh, the Western uh, world or the Western countries, let me say, or Western powers or so people say, uh, United mm. States of America specifically is uh, in the exerting pressure on Ethiopia. Why do you think that, mm. that happens? Well, I think America, they have their, they have really bad reputation for a long time. You can look at uh, Libya, you can look at Yemen, you can look at Afghanistan, you can look at uh, Syria, you can look at all these countries. They have bad reputation because they, all, they always have their own way of controlling things. They want things to be a certain way. And when you're not aligned with their will, then they, they start putting sanction on you. 
they starting like put, putting some triggers to, to, to literally destroy. You can see what happened in Libya. And I feel responsible for what happened there. And that's why I stand 100% with Ethiopia right now because I don't want the same thing to happen like that. But also I know they have their own agenda to control the Horn of Africa. And when you look at the Horn of Africa, Ethiopia is one of the strongest nation in the Horn of Africa. And so many reasons, you guys have been through a lot in the past, so many battles, so many wars with Italians, with even Egypt, I mean, Africa, but you, you won so many wars in the past. And they know not only that, but the population of Ethiopia is the second country in Africa. It has a lot of power. It has a lot of people. It has a lot of richness in culture because it was never colonized. So when you want to look at the African culture, you have to go to Ethiopia because that culture is not, it, it, it has not been like manipulated. It has not been like, there's no other spices from outside culture, but it's a real, it's a real thing. Right. And, and they see that. And that Ethiopia is the pride of Africa. They see that and they want to take that away from from us. They want to they want to weakening Ethiopia with their strategy so that they may take control of the Red Sea that is happening. There. It's happening in the in the Horn of Africa. And we know that like all Africans right now, we know that. And that's why we stand and we think that American, they should not interfere with the matters that are going on in Africa. If we have issues, we're gonna solve these issues with our own. We're gonna solve this problem with your own, but we don't want somebody out there to come and to interfere and take advantage of the situation rather than helping. Because they've never been, they've never really helped anyone before, but they've always been helping themselves. And we know that, and now we're saying no more, stop that. Sometimes I personally comment that the African Union is not uh, defending mm -hmm. countries in the continent. and. Uh, yes. Mostly, you know, what the example I think is about uh, Libya, Muammar Gaddafi, mm -hmm. who used to finance mm -hmm. the uh, union you know, more than any other countries in the continent. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think African Union, I mean, is, is that the kind of uh, a paper tiger? Let me, let me say that. You know, do you comment yeah. on this kind of thing? I will, I, I'm sorry, I will say this word. I think, um, I think they betrayed Gaddafi. I'm really sorry, I know this is a very strong word to say, but I know that man, he was not perfect, but he had a vision for Africa. And as you said, he was supporting African Union with, with, with a lot of money, right? And, and one of the things that is weakening African Union, in my opinion, is the support that is receiving from the West. If you're receiving a support from the West, you cannot really stand against them. Who, who is in control? Sankara, he said, whoever feeds you controls you. So if the West provide for African Union, that means they actually control Africa Union. So you are just there, but you cannot really make decision against. That's why even the situation that happening in Ethiopia, they cannot speak about it. They cannot speak, speak against it because they, they need to just see the waves, what's going on. So if we want to strengthen African Union, first of all, we need to not depend on the loans that are coming from outside. We need to cut that down. And I don't know, if, even if we cannot run, let's, let's, let's not run, but let's not depend on them. Let's not become their puppet. And again, I know this is the very strong words, but this is, I'm only saying this, what African feels. Like I am representing what they feel because I receive these complaints all the time. I receive these messages all the time. And instead of, I hope instead of, see, if they see this interview and maybe they, they get offended, I hope that they will take this, these words into consideration that this is how Africans feel. Like you are African Union, but you're not really there for Africa. Because the, the time that we need you the most, the time that we need you the most, you're not saying anything and you're not doing anything. So this, this is something that we definitely need to work on. If we had a strong African Union, I wouldn't be working for One Africa. My movement right now is One Africa movement and I'm trying to have One Africa because I see that, oh, there's a lot of things should be done, but they're not they're not doing anything. So why, why should I not do something? And I know that I can do something. Yes. Yeah, you are my other young Mu'alimu Julius Nerere. I, I confidently say that. Uh, actually, yeah. the question Thank I was you. about to ask you, the quote you raised, he who feeds you will control you, of uh, Thomas yeah. Sankara of Bukis Nafaso, who was assassinated yeah. uh, 74 years ago or so. Mm -hmm. And we say our prime minister, Dr. Abiy Ahmed Ali, Thomas Sankara of Africa, of this generation. Uh, what's yeah. your comment on this? And your, your, your insight. I'll tell you this, brother, that I, I agree with that. And I think, I think everybody is unique and everyone is special. 
And when I look at the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, I think it's, it's one of the uh, big representation of uh, leaders in Africa. They're kind of leaders that we miss for a long time. For instance, you know, recently we just lost our president Magufuli who was standing for Africa, who was there to defend Africa. And we were not working enough to speak for him, to defend him, to protect him, right? His legacy, what he was talking about, he was not a perfect man, but he was standing for Africa. He was standing, he, his message was always to unite Africa and to tell people that, hey, you know, we can do it. The bulldozer, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, exactly, the bulldozer, yes, yes. And the West didn't like him because he never allowed them to come. For example, if, 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 you, if you have an agreement with him, he told them that, okay, if we have an agreement or we have treaties, it has to be 50-50. My people, they have to be benefited and you guys, you, have to, you need to have that benefit. And most of them, they didn't like because for a long time, they won like 20% to 70%. 70% for them, 20% to Africa. But he said, no. He kicked out a lot of international companies because they were just uh, violating and exploiting African people. That is about him. But Africa, it was like we were not working enough until the time was gone. Then we started to say, oh my goodness, we miss Magufuli, we need the bulldozer. But now we have another leader who is actually there defending his own people, defending his own country. He might not be perfect. I don't say that he's perfect. Every leader, any leader in this world, they're not perfect. You know, they make mistakes. But you have someone who has heart for the continent. Why should we not stand with him? And not only that, but he was elected demo, demo, democratically by the people, right? That's one of the reasons that we can, we can actually support. We, we have to support and we have to uh, be proud of these leaders that we have in Africa who are actually doing good for the continent. We, and that's why I'm proud of him. Some people condemn him for um, heading for front lines. And mm. he's actually gaining victories after victories, even capturing and yeah. recapturing, retaking different towns, including mm. um, Dasse and Kambucha and others um, in yeah. the western part of Ethiopia. I mean, mm. what's wrong with his heading to the front line that uh, people comment on? You know, first of all, I think, you know, the opinion of others should not do anything to us. They are jealous. They are jealous because their leaders will never do that. Name one leader that will do that. Biden? Biden will do that? No. He's a sleepy Biden. <laughs> he cannot do that. Nobody can do that. I have, I have not seen anyone who can do that. And that's why I have a huge respect for him. Before, I, I, I tried my best not to talk much about him because I didn't want to create division because I knew that you always have people oppose you and people support you. So I wanted to be very careful with that. But then after that, after the time when he announced to go to the battlefield, I like this man, he's ready to die for his own people. Anybody, anybody with the right mind should support that. This guy, he don't care that, okay, I'll go there, I will die, but let me die for my people defending my country. Who, who, who can do that? There's no leader outside here can do that. And they're jealous and they don't want to acknowledge that. So they want to take him down. But they're not going to do that because Africa, we are working and we're going to stand with him. We're going to stand with him. We're going to defend him because we don't want to have the next Sankara or the next, you know, the bulldozer or something. No, we don't want to have that. We, our good leaders, we want to keep them as long as we can so that we may see a different Africa at the end of the day. Uh, even you tweeted on a picture of uh, Dr. Abiy Ahmed Ali saying, um, a servant leader doesn't need a high ground to lead and where he was sitting yes. in the middle of the army. Yes. What was your feeling while posting that? Man, I saw that picture and I want to appreciate this for One Africa family because they have been sending me a lot of updates. And every time they send to me, I share with my, my team to get the fact checks and then I post. So when I saw that picture, it really reminded me something. You know, uh, the leadership in this world is like triangle. A lot of people, they have like triangle leadership. Like you have a leader here and then you have people there. But the leadership is supposed to be triangle, but upside down. Like people first, and then you have to be down here serving people. Because leadership is about serving your people. And looking at that picture, it, it actually says everything about that. You can see that he's sitting down on the ground. And then there's a commander here trying to talk, trying to give information. And he's listening, right? And he's, he's the prime minister of Ethiopia. They're supposed to listen to him, but he understands that here in this ground, I need to be under commander. 
and he's sitting there listening to what they're saying, listening to everything that he's saying, and go ahead. And that's why they're winning. That, that's kind of leadership we need. But for a long time, you know, we don't have that kind of leadership. Like leader in a country, and, and this, I want to send this message to everybody. Leader is not God, right? But for a long time, we feel like, oh, this person is God. We wanna have. He's not God. You know, they not mistake, they make mistakes and all those kind of things. And that's why I share that picture because it it it, it really told me something that this is kind of leader I want to be like I want to be a leader that I'll listen to people I want to be a leader that anybody can approach me anybody can talk to me and I can listen to them we can agree to disagree and still life moves on yeah it goes on and I also need your comments on the way western media outlets are covering the events and the issue yeah. in Ethiopia <laughs> I'll tell you this brother like I started to get very sensitive Western media after the death of my late president, Magufuli. Because the West media, BBC, CNN, Al Jazeera, they, they, they spread lies about that death, right? They spread lies about that death. And I made, I, made, um, I made a spoken word that called Dear Western Media to talk to them. And I commented in their news that shame of y'all who are saying this and this and this, and you don't even know the facts. You are not here in Tanzania. You don't see the local people what they're talking about, you don't see our lives, how have been improved. And then you're just talking behind the studios in Atlanta, you know, CNN headquarters, you talk about what is happening in, in Tanzania here. It's ridiculous. So the same thing, likewise, when I saw what is happening in Ethiopia, I knew it, okay, this is what they do all the time because they have so much influence throughout the world. And, and when they make a news, you know what, other countries that they don't speak English, they just take the news from BBC and they translate it. From CNN, they translate in their own language. So that's what everybody knows. But it's lies. It's not truth. And that's why I publicly, later on, I publicly announced that right now, Swahili Nation, which is my YouTube channel, I said that this is going to be an African media. I want this to be an African media because I want us to talk about Africa. I want us to tell our own stories and to uncover all the lies that have been told by Western media for so long and to decolonize our minds of Africans to become the real, like to, to come back to the real roots of African and our real history that we have. You also called on um, Africans to come home and the homecoming challenge that uh, Prime Minister Abi, you know, calls on about 1 million Ethiopians and Ethiopian friends to come for yes. Christmas and um, in June, I mean, in, mm. in, in January. And um, yeah. you also supported that part. And have you visited Ethiopia before, or uh, do you have a plan to visit that? I've never visited Ethiopia before. I've been at the airport because all the time when I was going to Korea, I used Ethiopian uh, airline. Um, uh, but, you know, the funny thing is, even before the government of Ethiopia announced that, I already told my people that my mission is to bring all diasporas back to Africa to save Africa because we need you. Like I, I was outside for nine years. I came back to, uh, to Tanzania and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to stay here to, to develop my continent. So my mission is actually to bring those diaspora to come back home in Africa and to save our people. After I did that, you know, a couple of days later, I saw the government announcing that. I was like, oh my goodness, this is what I always wanted. This is what I want, and that's why I support it. And I am coming to Ethiopia this January, uh, before January 5th, uh, you know, because I want to see the land that I love. I want to meet the people that I, I love. I want to eat Dorowat. I want to see the place where all this movement started. And hopefully, I hope, you know, I hope I'll meet, you know, uh, His Excellence, Prime Minister, one day, but no pressure. Like, I, but I just want to be in that environment where the history is in the making, the new history is in the making. I want to be there with my people and I want to experience that. Yeah. And I'll be one of those individuals who assume we will be. And by the way, uh, in Korea, Thanks. you were visiting the Ethiopian center where uh, the Ethiopian different monuments, mm -hmm. museums, and this, uh, even I remember the Korean girl, uh, we assume you were, I uh, know, some uh, you know, reactions talking on your uh, Swahili nation on YouTube, because I follow yeah. that and, and, and mostly. And you uh, even uh, drank uh, Ethiopian coffee which is in fact organic that, you know, and would you, you share us that your experience then? Wow, that, that was beautiful experience, uh, by the way. Um, and that's why I really wanted to go to Ethiopia after that, because, you know, experiencing Ethiopia in Korea is ridiculous. I'm an African, I need to experience Ethiopia from Ethiopia, right? But that experience was amazing. It gave me a little bit of a picture of 
uh, the beautiful Ethiopian culture, food, coffee. I drank so many cups that, that, that day. I drank like 10 different cups of, <laughs> of, because of, I love coffee. And, you know, coffee was first discovered in Ethiopia. So why not visiting to Ethiopia and have that experience? So that, that trip, it was amazing and it was very productive and it, it, it's learning, you know, it's learning experience. I love learning. I love growing. I don't think I know everything, but I love learning and growing. And even my trip to Ethiopia, I'm going there to learn and to grow. Do you have a plan to be a politician? I mean, be leader of the country, because uh, I know in my imagination, and I wish that you'll be president of your country and also the continent of Africa. We're planning to unite the continent and the United States of Africa will be established and we create that unity we believe and we have. And do you have that plan? Um, my, my plan, my current mission and vision is to have a one Africa. And I always tell my people that I am employed by God first and second is Africa. Africa is my boss. Uh, so I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that we have a united Africa. And that's what I'm doing right now currently. About the future, you know, my future is in God's hand. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, but <laughs> for now, my plan is to see a united Africa. And that's what I'm working for. And your reactions on Ethiopian music. You now, share me, you know, a little bit. You have to share that with us because uh, I watched many reactions, um, really yes. amazing and uh, breathtaking mm -hmm. expressions. And in the mm -hmm. middle of which, actually, you, uh, you know, tell some Swahili words, uh, which yeah. I, <laughs> I said, Asante Sana, Bariago, this and that. Oh. <laughs> Uh, and many more can be said. And I always say, Nina for Haku Kutana na wewe. I say, you know, the kind of Oh, thing. look at you. <laughs> Once, you know, we were trying to unite this, this continent, we have to share at least yeah. a little bit from, from all okay. parts of um, this continent. And exactly. I, I need your, your insight about that. Yeah, having a united Africa, one Africa is very important for Africans to have a common language as well. And Swahili is the most spoken language in Africa right now. Congo, Tanzania, Kenya, Rwanda, Burundi, South Africa right now, they're learning Swahili. Uh, parts of Somalia, even Comoros, the, the island of Comoros, you know, Oman, they speak a little bit of Swahili. Um, so it's, it's, it's clear that if we want to have a united Africa, one Africa, then we have to consider having our own languages, local languages. Swahili can be one of them, but we can have so many. My, my, my passion is to have Swahili as the African language, like all of us to learn because it's very easy language and we can learn and uh, to, to develop ourselves. That's one of the things. So that's why when I was doing reaction, I had to teach a little bit of Swahili uh, because we need to know different culture. When I'm doing those uh, reaction to the music, I, I, I learn a little bit of words. Like I learn until right now, I learned one word. Uh, um, <laughs> some, some words to say like thank you uh, in different languages but um, you know I just f found myself very connected to uh, Ethiopian music I just fell in love with the music um, and I think I will continue to do it but right now I'm, I'm very 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 busy uh, working for One Africa uh, that's why I stopped for a while but hopefully you know I'll be able to uh, continue very soon You also published a book in 2015 a Swahili book am, am I right? Wow. <laughs> how did you know this? <laughs> oh, my goodness. How did you know this? I... <laughs> and I hope I will get one copy of that. Wow. Yes, I did. I did. I did. In 2015, I published a book, which uh, it went by the title called Ujue Mwaka Fibina Kumnatano, which means Get to Know 2015. It was just a book about 2015, that year. It was pretty much like a prophetic book to talk about this 2015, what's the meaning of the, the number five and, and all those stuff. So that was the book about, that was the first one. Um, other books is just collaboration with other people. For example, we, we, uh, we wrote a book, a Swahili book when I was in Korea uh, to teach Swahili to Koreans. Uh, I did that with another teacher there. So yeah, but I, I, I'm thinking of writing more books in the future. Something which you think is left behind to be talked about? Um, honestly, uh, for me, I would just say this to all my people, you know, uh, in Ethiopia and Africa. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for the support. Even I want to appreciate you for having me here today. Uh, it means a lot. Um, but most importantly, you know, uh, Nyerere, Julius Kabaki Nyerere, he said in 1967 that without unity, there's no future for Africa. 
And unity will not make us rich, but it will make it difficult for Africans and Africa people to be disregarded and humiliated by others. And therefore, it will, it will increase the capacity and ability and effectiveness into our decisions when we decide something. Because when Ethiopia decides, all Africa decides. When Tanzania decides, all Africans decide. So that's very important. And it's very important not to look at our differences, but to look at what we have in common. And what we have in common is we are all Africans. We are, we are we're all Africans and we all fight for the same thing. When you go abroad, people, they don't see me as Tanzanian. They see me as African. They just call out, oh, you see those Africans? See those Africans? That's how they see us. Why can we be united? Why can we look past our differences, like tribes, religion? Why can we look past that and fight for the same cause and protect the motherland of Africa? That's my message. Let's be one Africa. Mm -hmm. And Mika, Lucas Chavala, thank you very much indeed. Really, I'm very, very happy to, uh, talking to you. And uh, have a good time. Bye-bye. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Dear viewers, I've been talking to uh, Mika Lucas Chavala from Tanzania. He's a Pan-Africanist, uh, author, and musical um, artist, and also um, founder and chief executive officer of One Africa, who preaches about unity of Africa, unity of Africans, and the prosperity of Africa is his wish. And thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.